Stilton is a creamy and crumbly British blue cheese whose roots date back to the early 1700s. It tastes mellower and less salty than many other varieties of blue cheese. Always produced in an 8-kilogram cylinder format, it has veins of blue mold radiating from the center outward. The production of Stilton is strictly regulated. Only half a dozen dairies in the world, located in three specific English counties, are licensed to produce it, and only from locally produced, pasteurized milk. It takes 78 liters of milk to make each 8 kilogram cylinder of Stilton. They begin by pouring milk in a vat. Next, they add starter culture, laboratory-grown natural organisms. Then they mix a blue mold culture called Penicillium roccaforte with distilled water and add this to the milk as well. After about three hours, they stir in rennet, enzymes which coagulates the milk fat. After about 90 minutes, workers run a wire knife through the now gelatinous milk, separating the fat, called curds, from the liquid, called whey. Then overnight, they drain the whey out the bottom of the vat. The next morning, the firm curds go through a mill, which breaks them up into a crumbly consistency. Workers weigh out portions of 11 kilograms, each of which will become an 8 kilogram cylinder of cheese. After adding salt, the company won't disclose just how much, two workers gently hand mix the portion. Two different mixing styles, blending the ingredients more thoroughly than one. They funnel each portion into a cylindrical plastic cheese mold, called a hoop. The curds still contain whey, so workers stack the hoops for five days. Typically, cheeses are pressed to drain the whey, not stilton. Here gravity does the job. The cheese drains under its own weight. Workers flip the hoop once daily to drain through both the top and bottom. After five days, they remove the hoop. The cheese, now drier, stands on its own, while with a knife, they perform a critical procedure called rubbing up. They rub the entire surface with a flat blade, sealing all the holes so that air can't penetrate and cause premature internal mold growth. Now the cheese goes onto a stillage, a type of trolley, and begins its journey through the climate-controlled bluing rooms, named for the color of the internal mold growth which occurs there. Workers flip the cheese daily to prevent its cylindrical shape from distorting under its own weight. Within a week to 10 days, grayish-white, sometimes orange, naturally occurring mold begins growing on the outside. And from that point on, when the cheese acquires a certain amount of mold, they move it to the next level room, then to the next one, and so on. At about the five-week mark, they mount the cheese on the turntable of a piercing machine. With each press of a foot pedal, the turntable rotates slightly, and long stainless steel needles pierce the cheese. These tiny holes permit oxygen to enter and kickstart the Penicillium roccaforte blue mold culture, which the dairy put in the milk earlier on. Before long, blue mold gradually grows from the center of the cheese outward. To monitor the extent of blue mold growth, the dairy's cheese graters draw samples using a tool called a cheese iron. The iron reaches all the way to the core of the cylinder. When the sample shows that the bluing runs right through, the cheese is ready, more or less. The timing's actually a bit tricky. Stilton is a relatively young cheese, best eaten between 12 and 14 weeks. The dairy does its best to coordinate shipping so that the cheese is at its optimum quality when it reaches the customer. Therefore, it ships eight or nine week old cheese to local stores and seven week old cheese to international customers so that the Blue Stilton will be an ideal eight or nine weeks of age when it arrives at its destination.